welcome. When we were kids, you know, we made bows and arrows, this, that, and the other. And in the video where I made the scavenge bow, I said that I would do some homemade arrows. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna make some arrows using, you know, materials that anybody could find, uh, stone arrowheads, feather fletching, and these are gonna be bona fide hunting arrows. So I'm not only gonna build them, I'm gonna test them too. And I'm not gonna use any kind of, you know, specialty tools to make these arrows. These are all gonna be, you know, arrows that anyone can make. So let's get started making these bona fide hunting arrows. For my arrow shafts, I'm gonna use bamboo. This bamboo is an invasive species and the property owners basically said, get as much as you want to, take all of it if you can. So that's what I'm gonna use. And I have various diameters of it. Uh, just gonna kind of do a trial and error, see which one shoots the best. So the first step is gonna to be to clean the branches off the bamboo. So I got my bamboo cleaned off and I'm gonna try to use the pieces that are the diameter of an arrow shaft and I'm gonna try to cut them where there's at least one node at the end of that shaft. So starting at one good node, I'm gonna go down about 30 inches because that's my draw length. So as luck would have it, I've got nodes on both ends of this particular shaft so that's gonna work out pretty good. I'm just going to try to straighten these up as I go along. Uh, bamboo, especially fresh bamboo, is pretty flexible and you can bend it to a certain extent. Now the proper way to straighten an arrow that is a little bit off like this one would be to put it over fire and heat it up. Once I get all my shafts cut, I'm going to take and apply heat to them and straighten them out. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this shaft right here is pretty thick, but I'm still going to use it just to see how it does. Now after processing just that little bit of material, I ended up with nine arrow shafts that are approximately 30 inches to about 32 inches. You know, since I was trying to get nodes on both ends of them, some of them it didn't work out that way, but we'll have to see how that goes when we test them. Now, the next step for this is gonna be to apply heat to them and straighten them out, and then we'll get into making the arrowheads. To heat up my bamboo to straighten it out, I'm gonna use my rocket stove and a piece of plywood as my gauge. I really don't wanna build a big campfire to do this because I wanna focus my heat on one little area rather than the whole arrow itself. And if you're using actual bamboo, the bamboo itself, once you start heating it up, will get kind of sticky from the sap coming out of it. So here is one arrow that I consider pretty straight.
row straightened out and they may not be within manufacturer specifications but they're a lot straighter than they were uh, just leaving them natural I guess now we're ready to start putting the notches in them and get them set up to put you know feathers and tips and things like that on there I have whittled down the nodes on all my arrows and because I use all the projects that I make and practice with them, I went ahead and added just a coat of varnish and some shellac to it. For my arrowheads, I've got various materials. I've got some obsidian, uh, granite. I don't really know what type of material that is. Got some uh, shale and a piece of iron ore. There are two different ways to make arrowheads uh, out of these materials. One is you can flint nap them and if you're not proficient with flint napping or if you've never done it you can take like a piece of concrete rock and grind them on a flat surface of it to give you your arrowhead shape a soft material like this works really well on you know grinding it on a piece of concrete to get your shape with a large piece of obsidian like this you can take and strike it with a harder stone and get little shards like this right here and then take an antler and just kind of if you have one laying around or something like that and just go around the edge to form your arrow. I've got my arrowheads done using the two different types of methods of manufacture, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, this one, like I said, is ground. Uh, you can kind of see it's scuffed up. This was one made out of uh, the slate, and this, you know, also ground on the rock. And these I flint napped out of obsidian. And if you are a flint napper, you know, cut me some slack because like I said I'm not as proficient as I should be at flint napping. I said they're, you know, they are what they are, but I think they'll work. For my fletching, I'm gonna use natural feathers. For instance, this is from our rooster Fred that we used to have, God rest his soul. Then some pigeon feathers and a turkey feather. I have a lot more feathers than just these. This is just an example of what you can find when you're out, you know, in the woods, city, things of that nature. So I do believe that you can find natural feathers for your fletching. To attach my arrowhead to the shaft, I just filed a notch into the node. And that's why when I was cutting these, I made sure I had one node on the end of each shaft. Normally you'd use pine pitch to secure the arrowhead to the shaft. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to use some glue and then wrap it. To wrap my arrowhead, I'm going to lay my tag line along my arrow shaft and then I'm going to wrap up it. When wrapping it like this, the cordage that you use actually acts as a backstop for the arrow to keep it from sliding backwards. Then we're just going to create a loop and then run the other tag line through it. With our arrowhead now attached to the shaft, it's time to move on to the fletching. I cut my fletching from feathers using a template that I made. And I'm only putting three per arrow. And out of every one of those three, there's one that's different so that I can use this one as an identifier when I go to knock my arrow into my bow. I made me a mark about one inch from the end of my arrow shaft. And that's where I'm going to start my feathers at before I wrap them with some thread. So here's my first completed arrow. The tail section on this one turned out looking pretty good. Uh, it looks better than I thought it would turn out anyway. So we'll have to see how see if pretty will fly or not. Here is arrow number two. Arrow number three. Arrow number four. And this is the one that I used the pigeon feathers on. Arrow number five. This is arrow number six. I finished my arrows and I ended up with six. Now I started off with nine shafts and during the build process, I found that three of the shafts were a little bit too weak to continue on with, so I scrapped them. Now I had a lot of fun building these. Uh, this is one of my more satisfying builds. 
and the build time took a lot longer than I had anticipated and because of that this video ran a little bit longer than I needed it to so I will test these in the next video so I'll see y'all then